All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about now we're going to some examples of Venus being ashamed. The Legita Vashta that we covered earlier. So um, for those who might just now be watching this channel, I already made a video about that. And so this is a part of a series of videos <clears throat> on the Avashtas of Venus. And so now these are the examples of just a few examples of Venus being ashamed. <clears throat> And actually, the reason I didn't do, I'm not going to do as many thorough examples of this Avashta is because a colleague of mine, Laura Barat, has done a great video with this, uh, the same subject. And she did that with Karen White, who's also a great astrologer who I really like. And I got to meet both of them last September. And I was really impressed with them. And so I will put a link to that video in the comments or in the info on this video. So I'd really recommend you guys check that out. And she talks about Brad Pitt and how Brad Pitt has an ashamed Venus. Um, <clears throat> and how he was, you know, he, he left his marriage with Jennifer Aniston, which was like this perfect, you know, power couple sort of thing that America and everyone loved. And, you know, the, the masses were really into. And then he left that for Angelina Jolie. And so in a way, the public kind of shamed him. And then Angelina Jolie ended up divorcing him. And so he ended up feeling, you know, we could see how the shame would have worked out in his life in that regard. Um, his chart, his chart, you can see that uh, right here. Um, see, Brad Pitt is a Sagittarius ascendant. Laura Barak goes into this and explains this very well. So I'll just direct you to that, but this is the chart just so you can see it. He has Venus. Um, whenever a planet is with Mars and K2, it's all, always going to be in the ashamed of Ashta because Mars is just such an intense energy in K2 as well that Venus just doesn't feel like it can be comfortable or enjoy it. And you would think that might be the case with someone like Brad Pitt. Like a lot of people, a lot of women might not even feel like they were, you know, worthy or enough or I don't know, or something like that maybe even, you know, might happen a lot in his life. Um, but again, not going to focus a whole lot on his chart because it's already been covered. This, But she didn't show Jennifer Aniston's chart. So I actually ended up looking at Jennifer Aniston's after that video because I found it really fascinating. And I went, wow, look at Jennifer Aniston's chart. She also has her Venus ashamed. So it makes so much sense that she would attract that relationship. Like karmically, she was born with all that kind of, you know, forecasted in, his, in her natal chart as well. And this would make sense for such a powerful couple, you know, that had such a, such a great impact on other people. And, um, you know, they were in the public eye. So here we see Venus is with Saturn in Rahu, which will also make Venus feel ashamed. And here the Saturn has fallen, so it can definitely be felt, you know? It's not something that's gonna be easily ignored. Um, so yeah, that's really tough, and I, I feel for her in that regard. I bet she's had some tough situations with regard to that. Um, and it's interesting too, because she has come, like I keep talking about, this is an ongoing thing, watch previous videos, but I always talk about how actors Acting is ruled by Mercury, but actors can only play a role that they, hmm, that is in their chart to begin with. They can only play a role that they have the karma to play to begin with. And so every role an actor play or actress plays will be forecasted and seen in their natal chart. What I find interesting is that since that time, uh, since that breakup and stuff, Jennifer Aniston has tended to play a lot of roles of like uh, the crazy girl or the, you know what I mean? Or that sort of role or like sort of, uh, she was, she had roles like that in this movie, Horrible Bosses, where she played this like horrible boss that kind of sexually, um, uh, sexually harassed another person in the movie and she's sort of taken on those roles and I find that interesting because maybe there's been something going on in her life where she's had to embrace her crazy side or, in, or sort of embrace feeling a little bit crazier um, with or a little bit out there with her Venus because um, because it's kind of showing that and sometimes when we do that society can make us feel ashamed but it's just the only thing we can do we just have to be ourselves sometimes when you have 
this sort of placement. So I think that's a good example as well, Jennifer Aniston. And if you look at the time that they got married, just look it up on Wikipedia. I'm not going to do a whole thing on that. But if you're really curious, look at the time they got married. It will show even more, um, more hints about that. But so now we come to Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley is a, you know, he's a, he was a major occultist and I don't know a lot about him because I always just kind of got a weird vibe from him and I never really resonated with him. And he just, to me, seemed like kind of like a crazy person that was really good at manipulating people into following him. And that's something that you do notice. It's, it's unfortunate, but when you really look at the charts of like lots of gurus and lots of teachers, there can be a lot of people that are so sick that they, and so messed up in their head that they don't want to work on any of it. So they want to attract themselves to these powerful positions of like being a guru or a great leader so that they don't, they can just project all their issues on the other people that they don't have to work on anything. Some will even go so far as to claim like that I am an avatar. So I'm perfect. And anything I do is just like what Krishna did. It's just what I wanted to do. And they can get themselves into a lot of trouble, but the people who follow them, it's their own kind of, fault in their own karma for doing that anyways. Um, so with that being said, I kind of don't really, I didn't really think Aleister Crowley before I ever read his chart, I never really resonated with him as a great teacher. You know, Rahu can show where we're kind of like false or fake at. It's in the ninth house of teach of being a guide or a teacher. Um, but he does have this strong Saturn yoga, this Mahapurusha yoga in the seventh house. So he must have done something important or been here for an important reason and done good karmas and for some reason maybe just having you know sharing some of the information he shared was important who knows but we're here to talk about venus being ashamed and we see that his ruling planet sun is with k2 and is causing shame to venus so this is fascinating so like venus um could be uh women and and his son is debilitated so really they're they're starving him and they're messing him up mentally, but he is shaming them at the same time. So this is, an, this is a very interesting Avashta. And if you kind of just think about his life and stuff, it makes a lot of sense. And he was into some weird sexual practices that he thought was like making him a god or something. And I don't know. I don't buy it. So that's an example of uh, another example of Venus being ashamed. And... Yeah, that's really all the examples I had that I wanted to show because, again, uh, Laura Brock made a great video about this. And this leaves us to the only other, you know, examples to cover are Venus starved by the sun. And I've actually talked about that a lot on my YouTube channel overall in general. I really don't feel like I need to make examples of that. If you guys, if anyone's commenting and really wants examples of that, maybe, but it's just... Uh, it happens in one of three charts, so it's not really that rare if you just go and look at, you know, charts you have. When you see Venus and Sun together, the person will be, you know, agitated, or, uh, agitated by that Sun energy of authorities or leaders pressuring them to be a certain way, to live their lifestyle differently from the way they naturally want to live it. So I don't feel that I need to make... Um, a lot of examples on that. And then the other Avashta that I have not yet given examples of is Venus and Jupiter conjunct. And I sort of did cover that as well in a previous video where I gave examples of Jupiter-Venus conjunctions. Uh, look, search for that on my page. Um, I covered Bill Clinton's chart, Alexander the Great's chart, um, and the charts, I think of some, some just random pe personal people that I've met and been a client to, but in that Avashta, you really just, Venus does really well. So like worldly things do really well. You just tend to have a lot of good luck with getting worldly things. Like I think, um, Scarlett Johansson has Jupiter and Venus conjunct. Um, you know, like a lot of these actors or people like that will have that. They'll be very beautiful. They'll be very sexy. They'll be able to have lots of sex with people, but you'll actually notice that the Jupiter side, if Jupiter's not strong enough, 
one will feel very starved and one will feel very um, like still not fulfilled, even though they've had all those good things. Um, if you guys want, I could maybe do a video on that, but it just depends on if you guys want. Um, if no one asks for it, I'm probably not going to do that one. Okay, cool. So thanks, you guys. I will move on to some other things. I hope you guys have learned a lot about the Avashtas of Venus. I hope we can see that, you know, these Avashtas are very tricky and complicated. Um, this is just one of them, and we have to, we would, you know, you'd want to know all of them. I, ideally, at some point, I will teach all of those, but again, you know, I'm not, I don't make money. My YouTube channel is not monetized, so I'm not really in a rush to teach all this, but of course I do tutoring for $40 an hour. So you can do that with me if you're really curious about learning all of these. Before, and before I conclude, I also want to say that, um, remind, remember that a lot. So a lot of people had commented, actually not a lot, just a couple people had commented saying like, well, I don't understand this. This is like, you know, happening one fourth of the time or one third of the time. And yes, that's completely correct. So like, for example, Venus being, um, starved by the sun is going to happen in like one of three charts. Jupiter being starved by Mercury or Venus is going to happen most of the time. Um, you know, all the, you know, Saturn at any given moment, Saturn is always going to be starved by some planet. Does that mean astrology is broken? It's not working? No, it's just, that's how complicated life is. At any given moment, Saturn is being affected and look at life. Like life, there's always a problem happening to nature, which Saturn relates to, or, you know, um, just just look you have to once you see all these things and you and you can really like zoom in on them you'll start to see all the mechanics of life and why life is working the way that it is and you'll be like wow astrology is the most profound thing i've ever studied but i can't really like make you see that it just takes years and years of doing this and so without knowing all these other avashas yeah it's still going to be confusing i hope this was just like enough to get some of you enticed into wanting to study more. But, you know, like some other people were saying like, oh, well, my Venus is in, um, you know, I know these people who had Venus in Cancer and they're, they, they've always stayed married. I never said that Venus in Cancer meant you couldn't be married. I'm talking about one tiny aspect of your whole marriage Venus karma. And this is, it, it's not one tiny, it is one important aspect, but it's not the whole thing. And so Venus in Cancer, of course you could still get married. It'd be ridiculous to say you couldn't. We haven't covered Baladi Avashas. We haven't covered Deep Tati Avashas. We haven't covered Jagradati Avashas. We haven't covered how things actually objectively are produced in the Jaimini system. You know, we haven't, oh God, there is so much. And so, you know, if people want to, you know, a lot of people have commented saying like, the, you know, uh, keep it simple or this is too complicated and all. And I, I'm sorry, but. If you want to be a great astrologer, this is what you want to do. If you, if you don't, then you could just keep everything simple, but you'll be wrong a lot of the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I didn't want to be wrong. I want to be right as much as possible. And I would suggest you guys do the same thing. So if you don't understand Avastas in your first year, then what's, so what? That's like saying, I don't understand quantum mechanics in my first six months of studying. Of course you don't. Um, you know, I've been studying this stuff for a decade and I still don't know it. I still don't, I still am just finally teaching these avashas to you. You know what I mean? And so anyways, um, <clears throat> a little bit of learning is a dangerous thing. And I'm just, no, I noticed that a lot with people. So keep that in mind when you're studying. And with these avashas, there's still so much more to cover. You still have vargas. We have not even touched on vargas and how they're used. So if you're going to go into that, and you don't know how to use it, then yeah, it might be confusing. Um, just stick to the Rashi chart for now and just be like, okay, wow, Venus is in a sign of Saturn. Think about the delight of Saturn that I mentioned, and you'll find that that's true at least like three fourths of the time. Or, you know, Venus is in a sign of Cancer. Oh, wow, okay, they probably are gonna have, you know, times when their, you know, emotions get in the way of their relationship and when they're a little too needy or too clingy or too, you know, attached to having things be a certain way or feeling a certain way in a relationship. Um, but then still, like the strength of the moon, if that moon is full and waxing and exalted, then it's really going to star that Venus. Um, if it's debilitated in Scorpio and Venus is opposite in Taurus, then Tor Venus is super strong. It's just going to not be that noticeable. So we still have a lot of things we have to learn to be able to judge this. 
But I hope this has been enough, you know, to get you guys enticed and uh, begin to see how the avashtas that Parashara gave in that old book still relate incredibly well to all people, all places around the world.